Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and get started. Does everyone have a comfortable seat? Okay, wonderful. <laughs> a little wobbly, all right. Uh, I want to thank you all for being here this morning um, on this very cold and snowy Wednesday morning. And a special thank you to Dr. Good for not canceling school today. Uh, yes, I'm being a bit selfish when I say that because I did not want to reschedule this event. Uh, when Principal Otto Magley welcomed students into the New West High School 86 years ago on January 28, 1929, I believe that he knew he was not only welcoming them into a fascinating edifice that ranked high among America's finest schools, but that he was also welcoming them into a new era of innovation. Both Principal Magley and famed architect Dwight, Howard Dwight Smith, who designed the Ohio Stadium and this building, knew that the comprehensive educational experience of high, West High School students could not and should not be limited to the four core, English, science, history, and math, but that courses of study like drama, chorus, art, and woodshop also have their rightful place in progressive academic institutions like this one. They had it right then, and I'm glad to say that we're getting it right again. As the principal of this great school, it is my distinct and high honor to welcome you to the West High School Fab Lab. This Fab Lab was made possible by the $14.4 million Ohio Straight A Fund Grant. I welcome you to a place where the training of the mind and the training of the hand are considered equally valuable in today's global economy. I welcome you to a place where ideas will be transformed into reality and, where's one, and where one's imagination can find rest and productivity. I welcome you to a think tank in a maker space set aside for the sole purpose of satisfaction through fabrication. The musician finds peace among the notes of talking instruments. The actor takes residence on a stage with his script and props. The reader would live in the library warmed by volumes of stories and rivers of words. And here in this fab lab, doers, thinkers, and tinkerers, beware, for hours will seem like minutes, and seconds will seem like eternities, and you will get lost in the world of creation. And the only thing I ask is that you lock up when you leave and share your passion with someone else. I want to say thank you to Dr. Ross for his vision and tenacity in promoting innovation in our schools. If it were not for the belief in innovation generation, we would not have this new lab and all of its tools. As I stated earlier, Columbus State Community College has been instrumental in growing the engineering and dual enrollment pathway here at West High School with the help of Executive Director of College Transitions, Kelly Hogan. It's my pleasure to introduce the president of Columbus State Community College, Dr. David Harris, to speak more about the importance of preparing students. Dr. Harris. Thank you, Todd. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's a big deal for us to, for us to be here and uh, um, help celebrate this uh, this really uh, really big day for you um, I want to thank Todd I want to thank uh, uh, Superintendent Good uh, President Baker 
uh, we're trying to do some different kinds of things uh, with Columbus City Schools generally, but we're starting here at West. Uh, and the kind of partnership we have here uh, is something we're trying to replicate, not just throughout Columbus City Schools, but really throughout, uh, throughout Central Ohio. Uh, we have uh, our team working shoulder to shoulder uh, with, uh, with faculty and staff here. Um, uh, Principal uh, Johnson has been uh, such a great, um, a great partner um, and uh, we're delighted uh, again to be part of this. Uh, I want to congratulate the students for being part of an engineering program. Um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a tough lift. My, my first degree uh, is in engineering. Um, I had no idea that I didn't know this was a job when I was when I was your age, right? So uh, you hear a lot about uh, you probably hear this from your friends. Man, engineering is so narrow; it really limits your options. How can you decide that so early? That's what you want to do. Just the opposite is true. Uh, engineering and technical education opens every option for you. So whether or not you want to pursue a career in engineering, whether or not you want to pursue a career in manufacturing, that doesn't matter right now. What matters is you are on a road to success that, again, is going to open every door for you. And with a technical background, more and more of those doors are going to be open because more and more jobs in every field uh, are going to be based on a real understanding uh, and adaptation of, uh, of technology. The, the opportunity to be exposed uh, to different manufacturing technologies that this lab will provide, uh, again, is a big deal. And I would urge you students to tell your friends that even if you're not interested in manufacturing or don't know that you're interested in manufacturing, this stuff's fun. I mean, it, it's, it's fun to get your hands on. It's fun to learn what's going on. Uh, and again, even if you don't pursue it as a field, being able to understand how the technology interfaces with the materials, how design interfaces with the manufacturing process, these are all skills that are going to be transferable in whatever you decide to do. So uh, I know you had to come in here early. You had to get in here and come out of your, your, your classrooms, but really embrace this opportunity uh, as a great learning opportunity, one that, uh, that we think uh, can be a lot of fun. Thank you for allowing us to be part of it, uh, and thank you for allowing me to be here today. Uh, now, uh, I'd like to turn it over to really the, our quarterback uh, for our credits count work uh, with, uh, with Columbus City Schools, uh, Kelly Hope. I've never been called a quarterback before, so I'm actually very excited. Um, uh, my name is Kelly Hogan, and I'm with Columbus State, and I'm absolutely thrilled to be here. I am here at West quite a lot over the last couple of years because we've been meeting um, a lot with the folks who are very interested and excited about making more and more opportunities for all of you students who are here, uh, as well as your middle school um, uh, uh, friends, associates, brothers, sisters, whatever the case may be, uh, who are part of what we try to do in Credits Count. Credits Count is a wonderful program that offers college and career exploration and opportunities including scholarships everybody knows college costs money so while you're here there is the opportunity for free credit but then there's also the opportunity when you leave here to have scholarships to continue uh, if that's what you desire internships advancement all kinds of things surrounding college readiness, um, middle school engagement, family support these are all the kinds of things that are very important in what we do and so uh, these are the folks who started it off, made it all possible. Some of those faces you'll recognize. Um, but this is indeed a partnership, a partnership with AEP, with Columbus City Schools. Uh, obviously, the city of Columbus is very excited about it as well. Columbus State is very excited. And so these folks, though they may not be able to get all the snow moved in time for absolutely everybody to get here who we can hope to be here, they can move mountains when it comes to red tape and getting things possible here uh, at West High School and across the district. So uh, we are very appreciative of that. These folks, though, um, are some of the folks from your school and from mine that help make things happen. We work very, very closely together to come up with the right classes to make a pathway into engineering possible for each and every one of you, if that's what you want to do. Uh, we make college classes happen here, and we offer those credits, obviously, um, for no charge, and uh, provide you with the technology, the textbooks, whatever it is that you need to be 
be successful. These folks are working hard, along with others who aren't pictured here, uh, to meet and figure out how to make things possible. And it's not just the administration. This is a, a, it takes a village kind of thing. So in this picture, you'll recognize probably more people, if you can see it, sorry, it's a little small. But advising, academic advising, knowing what comes next, what you need to do to be successful, your guidance counselors here being a part of that, uh, programs like I Know I Can, um, your teachers, all of these people, we work together to build a network of support to help you figure it out. I mean, coming into high school being a freshman isn't easy, right? You gotta figure out high school. Well, we're suggesting that while you do that, you also start figuring out college. That's a lot to figure out in one time. So we actually have, for those of you who may not know yet, we have an advisor actually here stationed at your, at your high school to be able to help you and your family figure out what it means to be a college student or what it means to be ready for a college class. And of course, you have some fabulous teachers here at West who do the great job of helping you prepare for your classes now and what comes in future. And they are an integral part of the planning team so that what we do is only enhancing what is already here at West High School. And we appreciate their input very, very much. So the learning opportunities, it's more also than just the college classes. It's introducing you to things that you might not have seen before or done before. We have other learning opportunities. This was, um, uh, well, you know, I may have been a math teacher, but I was never an engineering teacher, so I can't exactly explain everything that I may show on these slides. Uh, but these things happened here, and things were made, and uh, using engineering processes and thoughts. and so. I think that one of the exciting things about engineering is you get to do things with your hands. You get to make things. I think math is fun. I just love math. It's so logical, it's clear, but a lot of people don't feel that way. And so the opportunity to actually have hands-on learning opportunities, like this wonderful lab uh, that is surrounding us, I know that for, for folks who are interested in engineering, that's exciting. And so these opportunities that are offered here and for middle school students to come here and to become engaged, that's the kind of thing that we want to do. And learning is fun. When you get to have fun, you get to make things, you get to work in a group, that's what happens in the wor real world. You don't go out there and just do everything on your own. You become part of a team, a part of a team that creates things, that does things, and that's what we're trying to work uh, work as a team, a Columbus State and Columbus City Schools team to do, to provide these awesome learning experiences for you here. And learning, I think, is much more fun with power tools. So I had to throw this in because it's very exciting to watch um, to watch young people grow and learn and, and experience new things. And so um, when I saw those pictures, I was like, wow, that's really cool. So. Um, you know, there's a, uh, a Dr. Seuss uh, book. Dr. Seuss's bir the, the birthday celebration is coming up next month. And the, you're, I'm sure you're all familiar with the, the book, Oh, the Places They'll Go. There's a section in that that says, Oh, the places you'll go, you'll be on your way up, you'll be seeing great sights, you'll join the high flyers who soar to the heights. You won't lag behind because you'll have the speed, you'll pass the whole gang, and you'll soon take the lead. Wherever you fly, you'll be the best of the best. Wherever you go, you will top all the rest. Except when you don't, because sometimes you won't. I'm sorry to say so, but sadly it's true that bang ups and hang ups can happen to you. Well, there's always the good, and then there's always the tough in life. But I want you to know, even though the picture may be a little dark, there are people in that picture and people in the previous pictures who are there to support you and help you. There's your family, there's your counselors, there's your academic advisor for Columbus State. There's all the people in this building who wish you well, your teachers, your administrators, and we are all here to help you be successful in making this transition. So I don't want you to forget that because you have amazing places that you can go and we're happy to help you have that opportunity. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention and I would like to welcome um, the Columbus City Schools Board of Trustees President, Gary Baker. Well, 
Thank you. Good morning, Cowboys and other friends. Uh, thank you, Principal Johnson, for hosting us here this morning. We're very happy to be here. We're very proud of the Fab Lab and the partnership with Columbus State and with our other partners. Thank you, President Harrison. And so on behalf of the entire Board of Education, I am here to to uh, thank you all for everything that you have done to make this possible, to encourage you in your endeavors, and to just simply tell you that you have not only your whole lives in front of you, but you also have the world at your feet based upon the advantage that you take of the educational opportunities, not only here at West High School and at Columbus State, but beyond that. So on behalf of the board, congratulations on this wonderful Fab Lab. We are so proud of you and we are there for you and we are working hard every day to make sure that your academic experience is as good as it can be and would love to see all of you at a school board meeting one Tuesday night. So please don't hesitate. You're always welcome. No? <laughs> Principal Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Dr. Harrison, Ms. Hogan, Mr. Baker. Uh, I feel the love in the room. And as I look around the room, there are so many people that have helped to make this day possible. But before we get to the actual ribbon cutting, I would like my assistant principal and um, someone who is, has been instrumental in making this, this room happen, along with Mr. Lucas Check, who can't be here today, and Dr. Timer Grace Mayo, the other assistant principal. I would like Mr. Greg Wisniewski to, to come up and give everyone a, a quick um, overview of the equipment that is in the room uh, as I work on this video presentation. Thank you, thank you. All right, so there's a lot of people crowded in here and the equipment, I'm gonna kind of point a little bit and describe some of the equipment that we have and I somehow became a little bit of the equipment specialist once equipment came involved. So if there's any questions afterwards, I'll try to answer them for you. Um, starting right behind the camera, we have a GraphTech CE6000. That is a vinyl plotter and it's a vinyl plotter. It's for cutting vinyl, but it will also draw on paper as well. So um, our CEA students, our civil engineering students will actually be able to use it to draw full width blueprints um, for the projects that they're doing in class as well as we can cut vinyl for various projects um, as well as any other material in that millimeter range. Um, right to the right over here we have a um, gravel graph which is a French company an LS100 which is a laser cutter and engraver and that uses the focus laser to cut on media between um, 12 inches deep by 24 inches wide and again that could be used for cutting vinyl could also be used for cutting uh, wood particles acrylic also engraving on those. Um, right over here um, to the left of the screen we have our uh, new print 3D printer which is actually processing a, a file right now um, and that again is used for doing three-dimensional printing of um, files coming out of our um, Autodesk Inventor program. So students are modeling and creating their own three-dimensional images and figures and then can print directly from the computer and then we use it and drop it in what's to next to it is actually a lye bath which is a very um, high pH base solution that dissolves the support material and leaves just the image that the students created in their file. Um, behind me and to my left, actually to my, my right and my left, we have ENCO, this is a CNC mill and this is an ENCO CNC lathe and two different distinction factors in how they operate. Um, in this particular, uh, the mill, the bit turns um, and the stock stays still and then it uses the CNC, which is computer numeric control, to tell the bit where to go. So essentially, again, you're going to design a part, you're going to create tool pathways and then tell it to go ahead and cut the material. And and um, some common materials is Delrin, which is a type of plastic often used in um, uh, bushings in automotive um, suspension, as well as block aluminum. And then the lathe uses the same materials, but instead of the bit turning, in this case, the stock or the blank, the blank turns, and the bit stays stationary, and then it'll move on a, um, a Y, well, on two axes, three axes really, and to cut out of that material. 
And then lastly, um, as far as the modern technology and probably the showpiece as far as size is concerned in the lab is a Techno uh, HD series CNC router and that's coming from Techno um, CNC out of New York. Uh, this is a 48 by 48 inch cable, um, three dimensional router, cuts on Y, X, and Z axis. And again, students um, will actually be able to make three dimensional figures pull them apart into two-dimensional shapes, nest them on a plane, and then send them to the, the router, and it'll go and it'll cut into that and cut those shapes out, and the students would be actually able to take those and assemble them back together and have a full-scale three-dimensional figure. Often used in cabinet making um, and design and being more popular now also in um, set design as far as the movies, a lot of special uh, effects props or whatnot are uh, created out of foam and cut out of foam on these machines and then plastered over and turned into what it essentially looks like a large scale piece, but it's multiple layers put together. Um, we have some basic hand tools to aid in the process behind us there. We have a um, small tabletop uh, bandsaw, jigsaw, and uh, drill press. And uh, not to forget, sorry, one more back in the corner, and I'm sorry that I didn't mention it, but uh, we haven't trained on it yet. We have a Bodoman Robotics robotic arm, and that is used, will be used to train students in the code writing for robotic arms so that they're learning the basic operations so that they are able to go and to um, manufacturing facilities that use robotic arms and actually be able to not only run, but even provide code to create simple functions for the robotic arms. And that's a basic rundown. One more back in the corner, I'm sorry, it's not fully up, I forgot. We have a Lincoln Electric welding trainer. Um, an actual welder and trainer giving the students feedback on their welds. Um, what you see right there right now, up on the right, is our ventilation collection filter system, and then our welding stand, and I believe um, in the bottom corner is the actual welder. Our gas tank isn't in there right now, we're still waiting for our um, welding surround, which will be installed here shortly. All right. Thank you, Mr. Wisniewski. Okay, so this brief video that I would like to share with you um, is from the initiative Innovation Generation, which we're a part of, uh, as a which is why we have this fab lab. One of our students, Quasia Poole, who is a junior here, uh, is featured in this video. Uh, if you go to innovationgenerationohio.com, there are more featured videos about their entire initiative. So please enjoy this. Planning next steps after high school has never been harder. Go to work or go to college. How about both? What do you do? Two, three. Whoa. 